What's up devs, my name is Vlad and welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about Google Anti-Gravity IDE. It is a super new thing from Google and I highly recommend you watch this video until the end because it's insane. If you ever felt that coding is slow, very difficult, Google's new IDE changed absolutely everything. Today I'm going to show you what it is, how it works, how to use it step by step, and in just few minutes you will know the important things about this IDE. If you are ready, then let's get started. Google Anti-Gravity IDE is a new AI-powered development environment that built around Gemini 3. It's another cool thing from Google. So the whole idea kind of remove everything that slow you down and allows the agent do the most of the tasks. It might look similar to VS Code, but I haven't found any statements that it's a fork of VS Code. However, if you are familiar with VS Code, Cursor or Binserve, the interface is not that different. It means you can grasp everything really fast. Currently, Anti-Gravity is available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. I'm going to show you how to set up it on Linux environments. For Windows and Mac, it's pretty straightforward. You download the file and simply install the ID. For Linux, we are going to use the terminal. Simply start with the first command. All of these commands you can find on the official website. And I will also leave them in my tutorial. The first command will add the repository to the source list.d. The second command update the package cache. And the third command will install the package. Usually it takes around 2-3 minutes, but of course it depends on your network connection. Once the setup is finished, simply type anti-gravity and hit the enter. If everything is okay, you will see anti-gravity application. The first launch you will see this guided tour. It will ask you if you want to import the settings from your previous IDEs from VS Code, Cursor or Binserve. Then you need to select the theme. As you could see, we have four different options. Then at the next steps, you need to select the way how you're going to use the anti-gravity agent. Let's select the recommended option, agent assistant development. At the right hand side, we can select the policy for the agent. If you want agent work autonomously, keep everything as auto. If not, you can select something different. I'm keep off the for now and let's go to the next step. And it will ask you about key binding and also about permission to set up additional extensions. Some of those extensions are required by the agent. Click this checkbox and click then press next. And the last step, you have to sign in to your Google account. And if everything is okay, the setup is completed accepts terms and condition, and that's all. As you can see, the interface is pretty similar to VS Code. At the right hand side, we have a chat, and in front, we can open project folder, clone repository. At the top right, we have the option to toggle different panels. We can open terminal, I then show agent chat. So basically, this menu allows you to control left, right, and bottom panels of the ID. If you notice, there is a Chrome icon at the top right corner. Basically, it's a built-in browser that Antigravity is using for testing and debugging. It is actually one of the most significant features that make this IDE stand out among others. At the first launch, it will ask you to install the extension. Simply follow the instructions on the screen. This extension is really important because it allows agent to use your browser. Okay, let's go back to the IDE. In the chat window, we have two options. How to work with the agent. This could be planning or fast mode. And also we have the ability to select different Gemini models. As you could see, the Gemini 3 is already there. And in today's video, we're going to see how it's performed with our task. Okay, let's try to build something. Simply create the folder or open the existing one. It's important to create a separate folder because otherwise, if you will target the, for example, desktop, anti-gravity will try to go through all the files and folders in your desktop. So in order to avoid that, make sure to create a separate folder for each project. Another important thing, beside your IDE, you actually have the agent manager. In order to open it, simply click this link. Think of it as a simplified view of your IDE, where you can track all the tasks, but you don't have control of the code. You still can see the progress of agent work for different projects, and you can easily navigate between them. All your project and task will be at the left-hand side. If you're more comfortable with this view, you actually can use it. But if you want to see the code, we can go back to this view. The cool thing is that you actually can look at both of them at the same time, because it is a separate two windows. Okay, let's try to build our first application. I'm going to use ID view and let's write our first prompt. If you watch my previous videos, you might know that I like to 
build a to-do application with these kind of tools. And let's see what Gemini 3 and anti-gravity will build for us. I'm going to provide a simple prompt, but of course, detailed prompt will be much better. However, in sake of testing, I'm going to use this simple one. Let's hit the enter. As you can see, the agent is start working. The cool thing is that we choose the planning mode, means before the agent will start building something, it will prepare the to-do list. Inside the anti-gravity, they call it artifacts. I will show you how to see all of these artifacts later in the video. Okay, here we go. This is the to-do list. Agent show us what it will be doing in order to make this application live. The next step will be implementation plan. The agent will describe the goal of the project, structure, the logic, and other important information about the application. And if you will see that something wrong there, you can simply edit that file. Okay, the implementation plan is ready. The agent will start execution phase. Currently, the agent work in autopilot mode. That's why I didn't ask anything, but you can change it if you want. Usually executing phase takes longer, so you can go grab coffee or watch series of Netflix. Once it's finished, you'll get a notification and you can test your app. If you want to see the artifacts, simply click on this icon and you can easily switch between them. So as you could see from my to-do list, agent has been done some part of the to-do. As I mentioned earlier, we have two different views. We can see the progress from agent manager view or through the ID. Both of them are showing the same thing. But like I said earlier, with ID, you have the control for the code. And here you can use only the chat. You can open both of them side by side if your screen is wide enough, but make sure to not get lost between these two windows. Okay, it seems the agent almost done the work and this is the to-do application. As you could see, it looks really cool. Beautiful design pretty interactive and the cool thing is right now the agent testing the application this is not me this is agent testing the application in real time that's insane all of this is happening in the browser all i am doing right now just looking at the screen so all of these interactions happening without me touching anything and this feature make this idea stand out a lot among other ideas let me show you it side by side. If you notice, the agent is recording the video and the testing video you will be able to see at the end of the task. As you can see the agent at the verification part, it has tested the application. Let me also try to play with the application. And as you could see in the chat, the video is generating. Basically, the application is ready and this is the proof. And this feature is insane. So as you could see, the video is ready and now we can play it and preview the result. Pretty useful if you are not sitting on the computer. You can check the way application is working and then use this video actually to adjust the application if you notice something doesn't work. Okay, let me try the application. It's a simple one. Let's try to add something into the list. And it seems everything is working fine. It's really, really cool. Okay, let's try to add additional functionality to the application. I'm going to ask the agent add the authentication and let's see how it does it. I speed up the video a little bit. And as you could see, now it's start testing the application. This is authentication. And the cool part is right now, the agent in testing the interface by itself using Chrome. That's really, really cool. Only this feature allows you to do so many things with this ID. And I think front-end developers will love this a lot. Okay, since the application is working, the agent has done all the tests. Let me try to play with the application a little bit in order to make sure that everything is working. And as you could see, everything is working fine. The only thing I've noticed, there is a visual bug. Let's make a screenshot and ask the agent to fix it. And I'm very curious if the agent can fix it. A small issue is related to top border. All I do is simply write the issue that I see and attach the screenshot. And it looks like the agent found the issue very fast and fix it. Let's try to open the browser and see if the issue was resolved. And voila, there is no issue with the board anymore. Super cool. And that's probably it. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. And I hope to see you in my next videos. Bye.